I don't really have any thought about the public transportation. I see that buses are going around, so I, I assume there is some kind of public transportation system, but I have never used it. Public transportation in the city is limited to two options, either um, taxi or uh, the bus. Uh, taxis are all over the place, quite affordable. The bus I've seen, but I've honestly not been able to locate where the bus stops are or the routes. You know, the bus service is very, very short. You have just like, I don't know, six roads, and uh, they take a long time to get to the, to the bus stop. Like 20 minutes you have to wait, sometimes 30 minutes, and there are no places uh, to go in the city in a bus. You always have to use a taxi. If you come to Erbil and you're living in the city, you, you don't really have to have a vehicle because there's so many taxis available. I think in the Kurdistan region there's 26,000 uh, taxis. They are planning to, to do some um, like train, a tram, tramway, they call it, all around the city, and it will be there accessible for everyone. And it would make things easier for, for all, of, all of the locals here and expats as well. Driving here is, I think, I would say crazy. <laughs> if you're not familiar with driving in a third world country, uh, you'll, be, you'll be surprised and scared. <laughs> And I've seen the drivers here, they're like maniacs, but sometimes when I drive I feel like a Mario Kart video game because people are just switching lanes and... They need to follow rules. They don't do that much here. But I think it has to, it has to start from the education. The infrastructure in uh, this town um, is definitely ready to receive a lot of traffic, even though there's not much traffic at the moment. It takes around half an hour to commute from the far left to the far right hand side of the city. Um, as far as being an expat, being a male expat, it's not, an, it's not really an issue. It's inexpensive, the drivers are fairly friendly. Um, as a female expat, uh, it's discomforting knowing that all the taxi drivers are male and sometimes they're a little too friendly. This is, this is why we started uh, Pink Taxi. We actually started doing market research and, and found that there was a lot of incidents being recorded at each one of the police stations here. And then we started looking at the culture and culturally, if, you know, if a girl gets ab abused or whatever by a taxi driver or whoever, she's not going to go to the police because then her family will you know, look down on her or look at her differently. So we figure if there's this many recorded cases and then I think it's just new and strange uh, for the local community, just as it was, you know, four years ago when women first started getting driver license and driving around in Erbil. It was new and strange, and there was articles being written about, you know, girls tearing up the roads and all of this. But all of this is starting to, you know, now it's 20 to 30 percent of the cars on the road are driven by women here in Erbil. So uh, the taxis are just the next step. They don't drive in a, nicely or in a good way or after the rules, but I mean, they, um, you can get by. I mean, use your horn, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, I definitely advise the expats on arrival to use uh, taxis for transportation. And um, depending on where they're coming from, if they're coming from uh, somewhere in the Middle East, they could probably be able to drive without difficulty. But uh, if they're coming from anywhere else in the world, I would definitely say it will take a while to get used to how uh, people drive here. It's not the easiest thing to be on the road.